Okay, what I thought I would do today was just get started on an introduction to limits. This is going to be part of a playlist. We're going to do a bunch of examples, go over a bunch of concepts, and try to get pretty far into the details of limits and cover almost everything you should need to know. And so I think where I want to start is just with this definition of the limit that we have right here on the board. So we have this kind of notation where we have the limit of x as it's approaching a of f of x is going to be some value that we do that we notate here with a capital L. And so kind of the new idea here is typically we're asked to find maybe the value of some function. Like if we have f of x, a lot of times in the past, we've been asked to just find what's the value of this function x at some value a. The different thing here with the limit, we're not asked to find necessarily f of a. And what we're looking to happen is as x is really close to a, then our function f of x should become really close to this value l. So now we have this graph here, and this is going to be kind of our very general example. This is not very precise because we don't even know. We have this function f of x here, this line, this curve, but we have no idea what that actually is. But we don't really care right now. We're just trying to get a general sense of this. So we have this curve f of x, and the kind of problem we'd want to solve for this, we might be asked with this graph, find the limit as x is approaching, in this case, 5. So what is the limit as x is approaching 5? of f of x, where f of x is this curve. And again, we can't really be too precise, right? We've got a rough graph here, so we don't know exactly. But based on this rough graph, the way we're going to do this is we're going to look at our values close to a or close to our phi value. And so we're, and we have to be looking on both sides. So we're looking in here and in here. If we knew what this function was exactly, we could get out our calculator. Like we could take like, we could plug into here like 5.1, 4.9, 4.99, you know, 5.00001. We could look at all these really close values if we zoomed in here. And just from the graph, we can't really tell, but from the graph we can see it seems to be approaching this two value. So I'm gonna say this limit as x approaches five is gonna be just two. And that's how a lot of these work, right? It's kind of obvious in a way, because you're almost just checking just notice that we didn't really care what was happening at five exactly. We looked at all these points around five, but we didn't really care what f of five was. We just wanted to get really close. So now let's look at another example a little bit different. Okay, so next we'll look at a second problem here, but really similar, right? I'm basically thinking this is the same function or oh, basically I'm thinking this is the same or almost the same function, right? This is the same, looks like the same curve with one important difference. I kind of made this we kind of have this hole here. So what I'm saying is if we were to look at this, just to make it clear, this function at f of five, I'm saying is undefined. Okay, so we have no value at f of five. We have this gap here. And we're asked to find the limit as x approaches five of f of x. Well, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna look at, again, on both sides, all these points really close. I might look at 4.99, I might look at 5.1. As we get x really close to five, it still seems like the value is still two. So I'm gonna say this limit as x approaches five is gonna be two. And again, we don't even care that this point is missing here at five. It doesn't even matter because we're just looking at what's happening around five. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of a minor change on this. We're saying in this problem, f of five is undefined. What if actually we define f of five? So what if we say it's at this point here? Let me just kinda of make it clear this would be one. So what would happen here? Let's just change this. So for this new case, we're saying it at f of five when x is five, when x is at five, well f of five is actually one. And then if we do the same thing here, we check again all these little values that are really close to five. It's the same problem, right? We get close to five and the value is still two. And it doesn't matter that f of five is one because we're not checking that. We're only checking around it. We don't care about this floating point here. It could be a thousand, it could be a million, it could be whatever, because we just care about what's happening close to five. Now, one other notation thing that I wanna bring up while we're at it here, if we're asked for the limit as x approaches five plus of f of x. So what this plus sign means is actually asking for us to look at the right-hand side so like in this case, now that we're asked for five plus, we're not checking all these values on both sides. Sorry, this is kind of a mess. Let me clean this up for a second. So now we're looking for the limit as X approaches five plus. We're only looking for the right-handed limit. So we're only checking 
to the right hand side we're only checking values that are slightly above five all in here so we might be looking for 5.01 5.001 etc but we're not looking at like 4.9 we don't care about what's happening over here we're only cared about the right hand side and so again in this case because we've got kind of a nice smooth curve here on the right hand side this value is still going to be really close to two like if we had a, if we could plug this into a calculator we could plug in 5.001 it's going to be really close to two so this limit is still two and then we could do the exact same kind of thing if we just look at x as approaches 5 minus of f of x well this is just going to be a left-handed limit the same thing now we're just going to be checking on this left hand side not caring about the right hand side just looking at values less just looking at like 4.9 4.999 etc and again those seem to still be going to around two and now at this point you might be thinking these are really like easy obvious examples and you're right that's the thing with this is some of these are really obvious but we want to start from an obvious but i wanted to start at the easiest stuff so we could just get a feel for it so now let's look at something a little more complicated Okay, now here at this point, we've got a different f of x here in white. And it looks kind of like, it looks almost like natural log, but just shifted, something like that. And anyway, we have this, but notice in the other similarity to natural log, as you notice, there's, it's not defined out here in the negative value. It just starts at zero. So then over here on the right, we're asked for, we want to find the limit as x approaches zero plus of f of x. So what that means is we're just checking for values. Of course, this is zero here. So we're checking only values on the right hand side very close to zero not caring about the negative values at all just checking in here well it's pretty clear to see what's happening right this is just going to be three because when you get really close to zero this is going to be close to three but i just want to show this because this is often the kind of scenario where we're asked to find the right hand limit when it doesn't even exist over in the negative area as opposed to our first problem which existed on both sides this problem is only in the positive and then I think what we'll do, we'll look at just one more example of these right-handed, left-handed limits. Okay, now for this one here, we have kind of this unusual f of x function in yellow, where there's actually a discontinuity, right? We get this kind of break. We have this break at x equal to four, right? Now over here on the right, we're asked to find a couple of right-handed limits. So first we want to find the limit as x approaches four minus, so that's from the left of f of x. We want to look on the left-hand side of four. So that means we're not at all concerned about this lower curve. We're only concerned what's going on right here. And it appears that this value, when we get really close, is going to be around 6. And then same kind of thing. When x is approaching 4 plus for our right-handed limit, we're just going to get really in close here to 4, but on the right-hand side. And it looks like that one's approaching 3. So we're going to have just 3 for that right-handed limit. And so again, this discontinuity, it doesn't bother us at all, right? We can still find the limit just the way we did here, just by going on the right-hand, left-hand side. Now, if we had to find the full limit, we've got a problem. There's some, there's some trouble here that we're going to talk about later. But for this problem here, we have an easy solution, 6 and 3. Okay, now, before I finish, I want to do one concrete example where we actually have our f of x function, a real function. And we also have the graph as well. And it's just a little more complicated, and we just want to work on solving this. And you notice we have this discontinuity. We have this kind of hole in our graph here at, at x equal to 3. And down here at the bottom, we're asked to solve. We want to find the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus x minus 6 over x minus 3. And I think before we get into exactly this equation, let's just look at it graphically. We can visually do this. We want to, for the limit as x approaches 3, we want to look on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. To find, and just notice that to find the limit of 3 is really the same thing as taking the left-hand limit at 3 minus and the right-hand limit at 3 plus. So we're going to look at the values really close on the left-hand side and really close on the right-hand side. And you'll notice we don't care about that discontinuity because we can see at those values that are close, this seems to be approaching, well, I didn't draw that very well, but it seems to be approaching 5. So as kind of a guess from the graph, we're going to say that this looks like 5. But what I want to do is we want to calculate this out in this case a little more, calculate this a little more precisely. And so what I can actually do to calculate this is what we'll do is, what I can do is actually factor this numerator. So what I'm going to do is factor this as, this is this factors pretty easily as x minus 3 times x plus 2. And then we still have our x minus 3 in the denominator. And then from here, what's going to happen is the x minus 3s cancel. And that's really nice because now we're just evaluating the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 2. And what you can do for that 
So basically, x plus 2 is basically this line right here that we have. So actually, this graph is actually just the line y equals x plus 2 with this one point removed. Well, by doing that factoring here and canceling out the x minus 3, we've removed the problem of dividing by 0 right here in the, num in the denominator. So at this point, it's just a line, and there's nothing complicated to look at at all. And what that's going to allow us to do is we can actually just plug in 3. So plugging in this, just looking at the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 2, it's going to give me 5. That's the same as this. And this is typically how we're going to calculate these is by actually you know, doing the algebra, doing the work to get a more precise answer than just looking at a graph. So that's it. That's just the introduction to limits. We'll just build on this. We'll have some more examples and get into some more details coming up soon. Thanks.